Protein is the most important macronutrient for building muscle. But how much total protein should be consumed to maximize muscle growth? Does it matter at what specific times throughout the day our protein servings are consumed? And is supplementation required to maximize muscle growth? First, it is important to understand what the role of protein is for muscle growth. The amount of protein we consume can influence the magnitude of muscle growth we achieve from resistance training. Resistance training is what stimulates muscle growth initially. This causes a disruption to homeostasis, and hypertrophy is an adaptation to this stimulus. So protein doesn't stimulate muscle growth in the first place, but the amount we consume can influence the muscle growth response. For example, this study compared the effects of protein supplementation with or without resistance training on body composition changes. 208 older adults were assigned to one of either three groups for one year. One consuming 20 grams of whey protein each day, the second consuming whey protein plus performing a home-based resistance training program, and the third consuming the protein plus performing a gym-based resistance training program. After one year, the protein-only group saw a slight decrease in lean mass, whereas the other two groups performing resistance training saw a slight increase in lean mass. So long story short, protein alone isn't going to do much if effective resistance training isn't performed simultaneously. It is also important to understand how protein intake is quantified. Protein can be quantified in an absolute sense, as the total number of grams consumed. However, this doesn't always make sense to prescribe for everyone because two different people could weigh drastically different body weights and therefore have different calorie and macronutrient requirements. So a more accurate way to quantify and prescribe protein is relative to body weight, as the number of grams per kilogram or pound of body weight. This is a simple and easy way to prescribe protein intake at a more individual level. Although it isn't a perfect metric because it doesn't account for differences in muscle mass and body fat for individuals at the same body weight. For example, a male who weighs 70 kilograms with a body fat percentage of 13% will have more muscle mass compared with a 70 kilogram female with a body fat of 32%. So despite body weight being the same, the leaner male will likely benefit from a higher protein intake. To individualize protein intakes based on biological sex and body composition, check out the video linked in the description. With that background information out of the way, let's discuss how protein intake influences muscle growth. The most important factor regarding protein intake for muscle growth is the total daily amount we consume. This refers to the protein we consume from all sources, including food, drinks, and supplementation. So the question is, how much total protein should we consume per day to maximize muscle growth? We have two meta-analyses which can help us answer this question. This first one aimed to evaluate the effects of total daily protein intake on gains in lean mass. Across a total of 105 studies, including over 5,000 subjects, the relationship looked something like this. Higher protein intakes tend to be beneficial for increasing lean mass, but the relationship is not linear. Once total daily protein intake surpassed around 1.3 grams per kilogram per day, there seems to be less additional benefit from consuming more. Although it should be noted that this relationship included studies with all different populations and most of them without resistance training. So as a slightly more specific paper, this meta-analysis explored the effects of protein supplementation on gains in muscle mass in lifters performing resistance training. A breakpoint analysis found that protein supplementation was beneficial for gains in fat-free mass when total daily intake was less than around 1.6 grams per kilogram per day. However, once total daily protein intake exceeded this point, additional protein supplementation had minimal additional benefit. So, based on the data we have, I would say that the relationship between protein intake and muscle growth probably looks something like this. More is generally beneficial, but there is likely diminishing returns. As a practical recommendation, those who want to gain significant muscle mass should probably aim to consume at least around 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight per day of total protein. And if you want to get every last percentage of potential gains possible, you might want to opt for an even higher intake of around 2 grams per kilogram per day. 
So assuming that we are achieving a sufficient total daily protein intake, the next question is, how many meals should we distribute this protein between? Does it matter if we consume it over fewer larger meals versus many smaller meals? Well, overall, it doesn't seem to make much difference whether the protein is consumed across fewer larger meals or more smaller meals within typical meal frequencies. This was observed in this study, which compared the effects of consuming a high protein intake across fewer versus more servings per day. 24 elite youth rugby players who were training and lifting during their preseason consumed a high protein diet of at least 2 grams per kilogram per day, which included 3 22 gram whey protein shakes per day for two separate six week periods. On one occasion, they consumed the protein shakes with their three main meals. And during the other condition, they consumed the protein between their three main meals. It was found that after each period, body composition changes were similar, with no significant differences in lean mass gains. So, it seems that with sufficient total daily intake, the exact number of servings this is consumed between doesn't seem to have any noticeable effect on muscle growth, at least within moderate to high meal frequencies. Although, it is unclear at this stage whether moderate or high meal frequencies would be significantly more effective compared with lower meal frequencies. I would think that it is unlikely that consuming your total daily protein between 1-2 to two meals per day is going to have any significant negative effects. But if you want to absolutely ensure the maximum anabolic response, then it is probably worth distributing your protein between at least 3 meals per day just to be completely safe. Next, let's discuss the timing of our protein intake. More specifically, do we need to consume a high protein serving around our workouts? This was explored in this study, which compared the effects of consuming the same total daily protein intake within a closer versus further proximity to resistance training workouts. 31 males with an average of around 3 years lifting experience performed a resistance training program for 8 weeks while consuming a high protein diet of 2 grams per kilogram per day. Half the subjects consumed a 25 gram whey protein shake immediately before and after their workouts while the other half consumed the protein shakes three hours before and after their workouts. After eight weeks, it was found that muscle mass increased to a similar magnitude in both groups, with no significant differences between them. So again, it seems that when a high total daily protein intake is consumed, the timing relative to our workouts doesn't seem to have a significant influence on muscle growth. This means we probably have quite a lot of flexibility when it comes to protein timing. If it is easy and practical for you to consume a protein shake after a workout, then that is completely fine. But if you would rather prefer to wait until your next meal to get your next protein feeding, you probably aren't leaving any meaningful gains on the table. But what about how we distribute our protein throughout the day? Does it need to be evenly distributed, or can we go for extended periods of time without consuming a large protein serving? For example, would it matter if we consumed less protein for breakfast and lunch, but made up for it at dinner? Or would it be better to evenly distribute our protein between breakfast, lunch and dinner? This was explored in this study, which compared the effects of normal versus time-restricted feeding patterns on body composition. 40 females with an average of around 5 years lifting experience performed a resistance training program 4 times per week in addition to consuming a high-protein diet of 1.6 grams per kilogram per day. The normal diet group were instructed to consume their first meal immediately after waking up in the morning and consume the rest of their calories as desired throughout the day. The time restricted feeding group were instructed to eat all their calories between 12 to 8 pm each day. And a third group implemented the time restricted feeding protocol and also consumed HMB supplementation, although that isn't really of interest for the purposes of this video. In any case, after 8 weeks, it was found that all groups experienced similar gains in fat-free mass, with no significant differences between them. So again, it seems that evenly distributing protein across multiple meals per day isn't essential to build muscle mass. So you can probably be flexible with protein distribution and distribute your total intake throughout the day in whatever way is most practical. But just keep in mind that this assumes our total daily intake is relatively high. 
Next, let's look at protein quality. This generally refers to the amino acid profile of the specific protein source. As a simple overview, there are 21 amino acids that a protein source can be composed of. These can be categorized as non-essential or essential amino acids. Non-essential amino acids are those which can be naturally synthesized by the body. Whereas essential amino acids cannot be synthesized by the body, which means they are required to be consumed from the diet. The essential amino acids are thought to promote a greater anabolic stimulus compared with the non-essential amino acids. So as an extension, consuming protein sources with a higher proportion of essential amino acids are thought to produce greater muscle growth compared with protein sources with a lower proportion. This study shows the proportion of amino acids of various different protein sources. And in general, animal-based proteins such as whey, beef, milk and eggs have a higher concentration of essential amino acids compared with plant-based sources like lentils, beans, soy, and wheat. But in reality, does the exact source that we consume our protein from impact the amount of muscle growth we achieve from resistance training? Well, in most cases, we tend to find that when a high protein diet is consumed in conjunction with resistance training, the exact protein source that it comes from doesn't seem to have any meaningful impact on muscle growth. For example, this study compared the effects of a high-protein omnivorous versus vegan diet on muscle growth. 38 untrained men performed a leg press and leg extension training program two times per week for 12 weeks. Half the subjects were habitual vegans and were provided with soy protein supplementation to boost their protein up to 1.6 grams per kilogram per day during the training period. The other half were habitual omnivores who were provided with whey protein to achieve a total of 1.6 grams per kilogram per day too. After 12 weeks, it was found that cross-sectional area of the two quadriceps muscles measured, the rectus femoris and the vastus lateralis, increased similarly in both groups with no significant differences between them. And lastly, let's discuss protein supplementation, most commonly in the form of protein powders. As discussed, it seems that total daily protein intake is the most important consideration for the purposes of muscle growth. So the primary role of protein supplementation is to help us achieve a higher daily protein intake. However, there is nothing necessarily special about protein supplementation by itself. If you can consume enough protein via the diet alone, then additional protein powder probably isn't entirely necessary. As we saw in this meta-analysis, there didn't seem to be much of an additional benefit to consuming protein supplementation in subjects who were already consuming a total daily intake of more than around 1.6 grams per kilogram per day. However, for practical purposes, this is where supplementation can have a benefit. Since protein powder is almost purely isolated protein, it can be a convenient way to boost your total daily intake with minimal additional calories. For example, a meal containing 30 grams of protein might be 600 calories because it includes additional carbohydrates and fat. Whereas a scoop of whey protein isolate could contain the same amount of protein with significantly fewer calories. So while protein supplements are not a replacement for a healthy diet, they can be used in instances where it is difficult to consume a high protein intake via the diet alone. Taking all this information into consideration, let's now establish some practical recommendations. The amount of protein we consume can influence the magnitude of muscle growth achieved from resistance training. However, protein isn't going to stimulate muscle growth initially. It can just influence the anabolic response to resistance training. Protein intake is usually quantified relative to body weight as the number of grams per kilogram or pound of body weight. This is because protein requirements differ based on the size of the individual. It seems that the total amount of protein consumed per day is by far the most important protein-related factor for muscle growth. Higher total daily intakes generally promote greater muscle growth, although there seems to be pretty significant diminishing returns with less additional benefit from higher and higher intakes. For those who want to gain significant muscle mass, you probably want to consume at least 1.5 grams per kilogram per day. And those who want to maximize muscle growth at all costs may decide to consume more than 2 grams per kilogram per day. 
the exact frequency, timing, distribution, and quality of protein consumed doesn't seem to make a significant impact in most cases when total daily intake is sufficient. Although it is unclear if there would be an impact in fairly atypical scenarios, such as when only consuming one meal per day, or during alternate day fasting for example. And in terms of protein supplementation, this can be a convenient way to boost our total daily intake. However, it is certainly not essential, and a high protein intake can also be achieved via diet alone. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks, and more.